Uh, life has been good, uh, honestly. Uh, I've had a very fun time uh, since the announcement uh, in terms of, you know, the recognition of being a, a Hall of Famer uh, elected is something special. But to be honest with you, I've tried to maintain a, the most normal life I possibly could. And that only worked for about a day and a half. <laughs> but it's been a fun journey, uh, very educational for me. Uh, that's this the part that I really was excited about. Obviously, the enshrinement week, all those things that take care of itself, but there's nothing that can replace the education leading up to it. And that's the part uh, of this journey that I'm trying to embrace the most. Uh, I've never ever been defined by titles, but what, I, what it will do is provide another stage to stand on uh, where that title will open doors for me to advance the cause of the Hall of Fame in this particular team. Uh, it's no different when I joined the Buccaneers. I wanted to make sure that the Bucks were relevant, successful, and to be part of a, a championship pedigree. Well, with this new team that I'm a part of, I want to make sure that people understand the history of our game, the fact that I've been blessed to be only one of 287 men uh, to be inducted thus far in the Hall of Fame. I want to use this platform to make a difference and better whatever this mission is on this team, I want to embrace it. And that's the journey I look forward to. And whatever title people want to put on that, by all means do it. But Derek Brooks as a man, I'm just thanking God for the next stage in life to make a difference in his plan. Well, the part about that season that I, I really enjoyed most is for the first time I was able to enjoy an individual award and my team shared the ultimate prize. I was the best player on defense and our team was the best team in the National Football League. Uh, I didn't have to feel the shame about it. You know, it's in a team sport when you win a Pro Bowl or all pro honor, it's great. <laughs> you embrace it, but the fact that 10 other guys help you do it you just can't really take ownership of it. But to be the 2002 Defensive Player of the Year and our football team win a Super Bowl, I was able to take ownership of all of those things and in the most humble way that I possibly could. And again, that's why that season was special to me. That's why it always be special. Uh, how many players can say that the Lord blessed them to be the best on defense and your team was the best team? Not many. So I uh, revel in that, in that company of very few people. There's not one particular point, but I will share this. Uh, it probably brought more pressure <laughs> than anything else. But uh, John McLean, uh, obviously he's you know one of the voters in the room. He visited myself, Warren Sapp, and John Lynch at the request of Tom McEwen. Uh, who was the Buck representative uh, in the room to make us aware of this process. And that was probably year 2000, 2001. I, hadn't, I was only in the league six, seven years and to be approached with that type of conversation. The Buccaneers had only had Leroy Selman you know, in the Hall of Fame. So to be educated on that process at such a young point in my career, it actually brought doubt to be honest with you, because I would go and we're playing a Marshall Falk or Barry Sanders or someone who I thought was a Hall of Famer and to say, man, one day I'll have an opportunity that I need to step my game up. <laughs> I need to really, I really need to step into another stratosphere to compete with those guys. So for me, that's how I took it. And I was so indulged really, you know, spiritually, emotionally, everything about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers being relevant and not going back to the losing ways. I, I never had time to embrace my individual career. And I've said that numerous of times. And that's probably the one thing, when you ask me what has changed, that's probably one thing that has changed since my election is I spent more time thinking about my career and what I was able to achieve more so than any time at any point in my life 
because I, I really am guilty of not smelling the roses throughout my career because I was so indulged into our team. Well, it's two words, character and integrity. Uh, the character of Derrick Brooks uh, as a man, not being indulged or not being fooled into being number 55 a football player. I think that was critical in my development as a human being, to understand that Derrick Brooks as a man is way more important, way more valuable, has a lot more to do than Derrick Brooks number 55 Tampa Bay Buccaneer. That guy has a, sh a shelf life. It was 14 years. Derek Brooks as a man, only God knows his shelf life. Bigger impact. Integrity. Uh, I was blessed to play this game. And my, my, really my sole reason was I want this game to be better because Derek Brooks was a part of it. I didn't know if that was a Hall of Fame career. Didn't know if it was a one down career. But the fact that I was allowed to play this game and my time invested into this game, I want to make this game better. And I really like to think that when I came into the National Football League in 1995 and I left in 2008, that this game was better because I was a part of it. Those are two of the intangibles that I took away from this game and that I like to carry on and teach others. I guess for the first time, uh, Sapp and I will be on the same team, and I'm not looking at his butt, and I'm looking at his bus. I think that I look at his face. <laughs> that'll, that'll be unique, but uh, I think Warren and our conversations is we'll, we'll look down the hall and know that we, we made a difference. There's not a lot of guys in this hall that can say they were part of a franchise turnaround, a team that started 0-26 to Super Bowl champions. A lot of people can't say that, but we can say that we was an integral part of that success. The first two draft picks of the Glazer family, Pro Football Hall of Famers, Super Bowl champions. Those are the conversations that uh, Warren and I will throw out. And then we'll, we'll jab at each other back from our high school days when he played tight end. He thought he could outrun me. He thought he could beat me. I covered him like a blanket. <laughs> and then with Dion, uh, you know, it'll all, it all be about tradition. Uh, he, he was really a pioneer at Florida State to get our university relevant. And he went about it with a showman style, but he did it with a lot of hard work behind the scenes. So a lot of my conversation with Dion will be the development of prime time and what that meant to Florida State University and, and how that continues to carry on uh, till today. And even my classmate, you know, Walter Jones, you know, being a, another alumnus, first ballot Hall of Famers, only happened one other time in history. Uh, Walter and I, we'll, we'll talk about that with everybody and, and not necessarily brag, but just make them aware <laughs> of that accomplishment.